What's up guys, it's Will here, and yes, I finally have a tripod, and it's probably the crappiest $5 tripod ever, but it works, so it's good for now. No more shaky camera, at least for these kind of videos. So today I'm going to be talking about organic chemistry. For those of you who don't know, I am a bio major, and I finished up my junior year already, and so a lot of people out there are probably in the same shoes I was or are going to be. So this is for all those people in the pre-med program who are probably going to start organic chemistry soon or are probably taking it now. So if you're an organic chemistry student or you're taking a class or you're about to take it, there was tons of misconceptions and things I didn't know and it would have been a lot of help if someone had just told me these things. So number one, the first thing um, organic chemistry is not as bad as everyone thinks, okay? Especially freshman and sophomore year, for me at least, it was probably the hugest thing. It was the one subject that everyone ranted about, even people outside of my major. They would hear about it and hear horror stories. They would hear words like backsided attack, and they'd be thinking, geez, this looks freaking complicated. First and foremost, it's not as hard as you think, okay? So, if you're about to take it and you're freaking out, don't freak out, okay? The thing with organic chemistry is, sure, it's technically a weed-out class, but, I mean, every class in biology is pretty much a weed-out class. I mean, I sat there freshman year, and there was about like 200, 300, 400 people in my class alone in the lecture hall. And, you know, now I'm sitting here two, three years later, and it's gotten a lot smaller. The biology classes have gotten a lot smaller, and the amount of people who still remain from that original class, they're there. I still recognize people from my freshman year class there, but the majority of them have been weeded out. Now, don't panic, okay? That's not, it's not about that. It's about how organic chemistry in itself is not that bad of a class. We'll talk about the weed out process later, but that also is not a big problem. If you watch this video, it will calm you down. There are a lot harder classes you will take in the future. So organic chemistry, looking back, it was pretty, I wouldn't say easy, it was definitely a hard class, but compared to other classes I've taken, there have been a lot harder. Now, how does this help you? You're probably freaking out like, dude, you're telling me that this is easy, that organic chemistry is easy? I'm taking a class right now and I'm freaking out about it because it's so hard. I get it, I get it. It was really hard when I took it too. And that's fine. But just know that if you really enjoy this field, if you really want to move on and progress, you have to put in the work. It's just going to get harder from here. And the thing is, what you have to do is you have to develop some sort of mentality. Organic chemistry is not the peak of the hill. It's not like once you pass that, it's going to be downhill from there. It's just going to go up. So you have to have this mentality mentality that um, it's hard work, but you have to kind of enjoy what you're doing. You have to be interested in the field. And for Orgo 1 and Orgo 2, there are a lot of kids I know who were not smart and they still got A's or at least B's in the class. I know people who did not even have the textbook. Um, I know some of you guys are probably whining that you can't read the textbook because it's so hard or you don't have the time or it's just so boring. And I know people who did not read the textbook. Maybe they skimmed it. And I know other people who did not even own the textbook because they couldn't afford it. And they still got um, A's and B's in the class. Um, the guy who didn't own the textbook got an A. And when I asked him about it, it was because um, he just went on Google and Googled the same stuff. It was much more efficient. Um, he didn't have to sift through all the junk in the textbooks. And he just learned the stuff from Google rather than buying that $500 textbook. And um, I know people who, aren't, who weren't um, pre-med, who weren't, you know, considering med school, 
who took organic chemistry, whether just to test out the pre-med track or just for the fun of it, or maybe to have some similar field like bioengineering or something that required it. And to tell you the truth, they were pretty, they weren't the smartest people at all. And they still did really well in the class. They still understood the concepts. I knew them outside of class and they were definitely not the smartest people, okay? But the difference was um, they put in the hard work to actually sit down and learn the stuff. They put in the time to actually go to class and try and understand it. And they put in the effort. So the next point is just put in the effort. For organic chemistry, you just need a you don't even need to put in that much. I put in like maybe an hour a day and that was enough. And um, I'm sure if I had just tried harder and not slacked off, I could have even put in less. But um, I mean, an hour a day isn't much. That's seven hours per week and you get 24 hours per day, okay? That's not even a whole day's worth of studying. I know some of you guys might be like, dude, an hour's a long time to study. And I, honestly, if you think an hour is a lot of work to put in per day, then you're probably not going to get far in other fields either. And you, you probably should question whether, you know, this is what you're really interested in. And it's really fine if that's not what you're interested in because me, myself, I'm kind of, you know, straying along the path to whether whether or not um, this is the right stuff for me. And I know a lot of people out there who just, they, they take these classes at the beginning of the year and they realize this, I'm just not interested in this. It's intended to figure out if you're really passionate about the field. And the thing with Organic Chemistry 1 and or Organic Chemistry 2 is that it's not even that hard. And there's a whole bunch of people who I know were pretty dumb who decided they weren't interested and still got A's in the class. You just have to put in enough time and um, make sure you understand the material. If you're really, if you really want a good grade, just put in, you know, two hours a day. That's still not that much, okay? When you, once you get into the real world, two hours per day for working or studying is nothing, dude. So if you're having problems with this now, just switch over to a business field or whatever your true interests lie. Just put in the work, dude. It's not that hard. It's not worth complaining about, okay? Another thing is, it's one of those big classes that a lot of people take freshman and sophomore year. And because of that, it's so much easier than those classes later on. So you really got to bring the heat now because um, later on, the competition is only going to get tougher. And the people who really want it, they're going to work harder and get it. So if you don't really want it as much as them, then maybe you should question whether or not this is the field for you. But for a lot of people out there, I think you know this is what you want. So all you got to do is say, okay, I like this stuff. I'm going to put in that one to two hours a day to review my notes after class, study, do some practice problems, and... That's all it took for me, and um, you can get an A in the class. To be quite honest, I actually had to take it twice. The first time I took it, um, I didn't do so well um, because I did not put in the effort. The second time I took it, you know, I really wanted to get that A, so I went overboard with it. I stayed after class each day, and then I went to office hours every single day with the teacher, and I did practice problems. And I, I really wanted that A, and I got it. It's a lot of work, but it's definitely manageable. A lot of people might look at me and say, oh, he's Asian, he's naturally smart. Actually, I'm actually dumber than your average person. You might not believe that, but I guarantee you, I'm dumber than the average person, and a lot of Asians are in the same boat. The difference is that the Asian culture, they... It kind of pushes you to work harder than the rest. So even though I'm, I'm kind of dumber, I work harder and I actually take the time to learn it. So people who are smarter, they might pick up on it faster than me. But, you know, I stayed after class and I worked hard and that's what it takes. Uh, did it kill me? No. Was it that stressful? No. 
um, was it as hard as the uh, tons of other classes I'm taking now in junior year? Definitely not. So you'll definitely get through it. And I still remember um, when I took those classes, there was like hundreds of people who took it. And since it was like a freshman, sophomore level class, I saw whole bunches of different types of people there. You got the sorority girls, you got the frat guys, you got the sports people. You got all these different types of groups taking it. As time went by, a lot of them got weeded out. But despite that, you still got a bunch of people who were in sororities, who were really good looking girls, who still got A's in the class. Sure, it's not as easy, the curve is pretty hard. Despite like all these people getting A's, it was still like, what, 20%, 30% A's at best. But it's definitely possible. I suggest possibly retaking it. Summer classes, you get a lot less people and the curve's a lot more lenient so you have a better chance. That's kind of what I did. Don't always assume it's that hard of a class. I know um, some sorority girls who are really good looking and guys who, are, who look pretty dumb, who were actually pretty dumb, who got good grades in the class. It's amazing because uh, last year, fall semester, which was probably about six or seven months ago, um, I was taking cell biology, which is B-Sci 330. Man, that class was so freaking hard. As soon as you s sat down and the, the lecture guy started talking, the teacher started talking, you had to speed right with your pencil, and that was not enough. Some people were typing and they couldn't keep up, and everyone had a voice recorder because he was like speaking like 50 words per second because he had to get in so much information about the cells and stuff like that. And despite this, it was still like a huge class. I would say about 175, maybe even 150 people in a huge lecture class. It wasn't really weeded out that much still. It was such a hard class. I had a really tough time getting like a, a B or C in a class. Despite all this, um, there was still, you know, really good looking girls in the class. And I'm like, how, how, how are people so good looking and yet so smart too it's like dang but um it was really cool because uh you saw you know your typical type of people there uh the typical nerds and stuff like that but um every now and then you would see like um sorority girls or people like that and they were actually doing really well in this class don't always assume um bio is going to attract a lot of unattractive people, even though that kind of is the case for the most part. I would say uh, props to them for maintaining their inner and outer beauty, I guess. But uh, back on track with the video. So put in the work, do what you gotta do, and if you like this video, hit the subscribe button. Peace out, I'll see you guys later.